Hey guys, how's it going? Happy Friday. Now, of course, we're in Michigan, and if you were here last week, it was like so freezing cold I couldn't work. 40 degrees, it almost snowed. Now, it's about 90 degrees, and I'm sweating my butt off in my shop, which has no AC. So, shout out to all of you out there who are sweating your butts off, because I'm right there with you, and we've all got something in common, and I love you all. Now, those of you that are in the nice, cozy AC, psh, screw you guys. No, you guys are awesome, too. So how's it going, guys? I hope everyone's doing good. I've been putting up quite a few shooting videos. I have a couple that are already posted on YouTube now and plenty more in the queue. That's the ones that Susan's willing to allow. See, here's the problem. YouTube, that's where we all congregate and we hang out. And I like to watch YouTube too. Not because I like Susan Wiki Wiki or any of the overlords, tech monopolies. Many say oligarchy and I don't think they're wrong, are they? But this is where all of us are at, and sometimes I like to watch a video working on a car, a truck, and then I like to go watch a gun video. I even like to watch soap making videos, because many of you know that's a hobby of mine. However, it's tough. I'll spend hours, in some cases a lot of money, making a video, and it'll say not suitable. Now, it used to mean demonetized. You wouldn't get the crumbs. Now it means restricted, and they tell you so. They literally say restricted, so... I need all the help I can get, guys. There's many ways you can support this channel. Patreon, you guys are awesome. Channel members, that helps me financially actually spend the time and money to get cool stuff. Also, just sharing these videos with your friends because the algorithm doesn't like gun channels. It's pretty clear. And it's just a constant struggle on here. But the reason why I keep doing these videos is for all of you. So I appreciate all of your support. I really do. Just hanging out with me and leaving me nice comments and offering encouragement, that's also supporting the channel. So thanks a lot, guys. And for every couple videos you see, there's always a couple videos that don't quite make the Susan cut. And that's just the way it is. So I thought I'd let you guys know that you hear a lot of your favorite gun tubers talking about this. And look, I don't know if everybody's truthful about everything or not. But when it comes to this, they're probably not lying to you. It's a crazy place we're at right now on here. Patreon supporters, channel members, I did not forget about you guys. See, YouTube has this other weird convoluted thing. Go look it up. And I'm not going to say the word because I don't like Susan, but I used to like her, but not anymore. A GAW, there's like 25 different terms and conditions and rules and craziness just about that. However, all the stuff from the IV 8888 range day, you guys are getting it all. So stay tuned. Patreon, I'm going to put a post there. Channel members, I'm going to put a post there, and it's going to be in the next couple days. I'll probably send you a link to like go to another site to watch the video that tells you where you can give me your name and all that. And by the time it's said and done, like I said, I'm going to keep like the Taurus hat and the one T-shirt and everything else is going to be yours. But YouTube's being draconian again, even with that kind of stuff. So channel members, Patreon supporters, thank you so much. Just look for a post in your community post. If some of you guys don't know what YouTube community post is, just ask the chat. Someone will probably help you figure it out. And I'm not being sarcastic. There's literally people on the daily that say, what's a YouTube community post? It's it's on there. It's on your phone. It's on your computer. So definitely check that. And then Patreon, you just log into your account. Or if you have email notifications, you'll get it there. So we definitely have all the stuff lined up and ready to GAW. All right. So the title of this stream, I hope no one didn't get the wrong idea. In fact, it's exactly what it is. The Second Amendment does not give you the right to keep and bear arms. And that is actually a good thing. It's actually what makes the United States different than almost all the other countries that have ever existed. Because in many other countries, and by the way, we don't want to be like the rest of the world. This is America. and We can never, ever become a communist country. See, in the United States of America, our founding fathers realized acknowledged and actually praised the fact that your rights are given to you by your creator. These are natural rights. And when people say your rights are given to you by God, look, it's whatever you believe created you. These are laws of nature and nature's laws. And as long as you don't believe that the former vice president, yeah, that's a real winner, isn't it? And as long as you don't believe that any politician created you, that means they did not give you your rights. You can be an atheist, you can be an agnostic, and obviously the First Amendment protects your right, your natural right, to exercise freely or not exercise religion at all. But the thing that we need to remember 
And where I often find the most encouragement from is, look, the government, if they gave us privileges, if they gave us rights, then wouldn't they be able to take them away? See, that's how many constitutions are set up in many countries. The crown will allow the peasants to do this, right? This other country, a lot of times they say, Democratic People's Republic of fill in the blank, China, North Korea, etc. Some of the worst places to possibly live. And that's why we need to fight like hell to make sure America never, ever becomes that. And I think as the Declaration of Independence talks about, people will suffer evils while evils are most sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms in which they are custom, but when a long train of usurpations, right? And I think a lot of us feel that we're kind of getting pretty far down the tracks, don't you? And I understand why you think that way. And I think for me, what offers me the very most encouragement is actually two things. Keeping in mind that government's instituted amongst men. That's what the Declaration of Independence says. That means me, you, all of us. So just knowing that there's all of you right here hanging out with me on a Friday night and in all my different videos and just knowing that, hey, we've got each other's back, that offers me a lot of encouragement. And I think you should all get encouragement from that too. It also offers me encouragement that as brave as the founding fathers were, you know, you look at people like Madison, Hamilton, John Hancock, the biggest, boldest signature right on what would have been a death warrant if they would have lost. And they knew they couldn't lose. And if they would have lost, we'd be under a monarchy right now. And that's why Ben Franklin, when he was asked, what do we have, sir, a monarch or a, or a republic? He said a republic, if you can keep it. Now, Ben Franklin didn't give you your rights either, actually, and neither did George Washington, neither did Paul Revere, neither did a lot of these people. Although we'd rather have them in office, I'm sure right now, probably infinitely more than the people that are there. Because let's face it, Democrats might suck worse, maybe, probably, in a lot of things, but really all of them suck. And you can't ever depend on a politician to truly uphold your rights, because that's what these people are. They're part of the government. The government is supposed to be instituted amongst men, us. We have the 10th Amendment. That talks very specifically that the powers that aren't very specifically given to the federal government, right, are inherent in the states and then ultimately to the people. And we're going to talk about that more. And I have a guest coming on in a few minutes. My friend Rick, a lot of you guys know him well. He's been live on many streams, and I think he's in the chat right now. And we're going to talk a little bit about how the government was supposed to be built from the ground up, meaning little old peons like me and you, people that hey, you might have worked your nine to five in an air-conditioned office, and that's totally fine because you're part of we the people. Or maybe you were out there, you're a semi-truck driver. You were working on your trailer trying to get the lights going, and you had to work overtime today. Maybe you were out cutting grass with sweating, insects, singing. Look, this is who we are. This is us, America. And it's totally natural for Americans to have rights endowed by their creator. And anyone that tries to tell you that's not the case, they're wrong and they're lying to you and you need to reject that. And the government did not give you your rights. The second amendment, it doesn't say the government of the United States of America gives you the right to keep and bear arms. It doesn't say that at all, does it? No, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. That's the why. We want to be free, don't we? We want to have a free state. Yeah, we do, don't we? And who wouldn't want that? Because it says right on the Declaration, we're endowed by our Creator, certain unalienable rights, and amongst these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I always say this, and I'm going to keep saying it as long as I have any breath in my body. If you have those things, that's all you could ever, ever possibly need, right? And that's a beautiful thing. And the Founding Fathers, they didn't give that to you. They acknowledged it, and they formed a country, and they fought off tyranny based on these principles, didn't they? So, of course, we want a free state. We want the right to be free. We want the right to freely exercise all of our natural rights, don't we? Well, how is that going to be possible? A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. Well, that's simple. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, when it says the right of the people, that's actually a very, very carefully worded phrase there. It doesn't say that the government grant will grant you the privilege of bearing arms. No, it doesn't at all. The right of the people means they acknowledge it already existed before they wrote it down. And they also talk about that in the preamble to the Bill of Rights. And it's talked about in much of their writings. 
that they did up to and including while they were drafting. You know, 1791, it had already been 15 years since the Declaration of Independence was signed, 16 years since they started fighting. A lot of people think that it was July 4th was the shot heard around the world. No, it was actually almost a full year earlier in 1775. And they said, hold on a minute. When we started this great experiment on self-governance, when we wrote that Declaration of Independence, because it's all in there, and I read it often on this show, and I'll probably read it again tonight, because we should always hear this. You hear so much pollution and so much stuff that's trying to lead you astray. We need to constantly keep reminding us of stuff that's pure and is good. And it's called encouragement. We need to be encouraged. And I don't want you guys to be depressed. But we do have to take this seriously. Because the enemy to our freedom is formidable. And it's here. And the wolves are at the door. Look what the ATF's trying to do right now. Look at this former vice president. Look at a lot of these people. It's literally crazy, isn't it? Yeah, you're probably sitting to yourself, well, duh, yeah. Well, what are we going to do about it? Have a piece of paper just sit there? Probably not, okay? But at the same time, look, they've got us to the situation right now where they're trying to make people scared and say, we'll take away your right to keep and bear arms. I'm just here to remind you tonight, they can't take it away because this is like way above their pay grade. Think about it this way. If the late, great George Washington... Okay, and I know these weren't perfect people. Nobody's ever going to be perfect. In fact, they even wrote that they're striving towards a more perfect union. None of the founding fathers ever said this was going to be a perfect country. So no, of course, none of these people were perfect. But probably George Washington, let's just say for argument's sake tonight, is probably better than this former vice president. Would you guys at least agree on that? And just realize that since George Washington didn't give you your rights, and neither did Thomas Jefferson or all of these people who actually believed in this grand experiment on self-governance, this republic, if they didn't give it to you, sure as heck no current government man gave it to you. And it's kind of a liberating feeling if you just sit and think about it. And you're like, well, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Who the heck are these people? Really, they're nothing if you really think about it. Yeah, I get it. I get it. They'll sit there. They'll shoot your dog. They'll do all these things. And these things do happen. And it's totally crazy. The world we're living in right now. There's a lot of bad people all over the place. But at the same time, you'll always have that right. You will. And there's a heck of a lot of people out there who are either going to enjoy the free exercise of their rights. Or I guess they'll just lay down and give it up. And that's where I want all of you guys to just stay vigilant and stay active. And don't just lay down. Look, it's a republic if you can keep it. Meaning if you don't keep it, if you just sit there. And do nothing. Evil always prevails when good men do nothing. And we can have many, many different definitions of what we believe is good, what we believe is bad. But let's just say this. There's a few uniting principles that we can probably all agree on. And other than that, we probably just want to be left alone. I mean, is that where you guys are at right now? You just want the government to leave you the heck alone, don't you? So we're going to sit and talk about that. My friend Rick should be here any second now, I assume. In fact, he might be right outside right now. Now, there's a lot of movements going on that I support and I think people should be doing. Where we can talk a little bit about two-way sanctuary counties. I think it's a very interesting topic because that's actually what the government was supposed to be for, right? Isn't that the only reason it was instituted? One of the main reasons was to protect our natural rights that weren't given to us by the government, but they're sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. So there's kind of a resurgence in the two-way sanctuary county movement. And there's one coming up here right in Michigan in the next week and a half that I'm going to encourage all of you guys to join. There's other things going on, like I said, with the ATF, with all these kinds of crazy things and I think we need to be aware of that too. But at the same time, just remember the ATF certainly did not grant you your rights. If the founding fathers didn't, there's no way some, in my opinion, unconstitutional three-letter agency could have possibly given you anything. I mean, do you guys think about that? I seriously hope you are. And I hope you guys are all good tonight, even though it's like super, super hot in here right now. And there he is. What's happening, Rick? What's happening? Hey, let's see if we can squeeze in here. It's been a while since I've been on. Yeah, good to have you, man. 
for those of you that are new to the channel, this is my friend Rick Naper. Hello. He's getting his cold drinks in order, which we need because it's what about 100 degrees in That's this not shop. Too bad here. It's pretty hot. It's warm, but it's <laughs> not bad. Well, I was talking about maybe someone's a semi truck driver that had to work on their their trailer, and maybe I was yeah, talking I heard, about I you, heard, right? Yeah. Is that chair giving out on you? No, it's just okay. go ahead and jack it back up again. It it's, should. It's okay. I'm good. All right. So yeah, we uh, we were this camera going taking care of some issues on my truck. I was replacing uh, power steering lines. Yeah, they're kind of leaky. Yeah. And then we found a couple issues on my trailer that we need to do address. So. And for all of you out there that work on your own cars, trucks, trailers, you know exactly what he's talking about. It starts off routine maintenance. and Those things are so <laughs> dirty, too. Oh, God. I dread the day that I break down out on the road somewhere. I get it, guys. So, I we work on our own stuff. I do, too. I have a hydraulic cylinder I have to take <clears throat> off and send in because I broke down on a job site. My skid steer blew a seal on the lift cylinder for the bucket. So there you guys go. So, pretty interesting stuff you're talking about tonight. Yeah, and that's kind of what we were talking about earlier. Like, this government, right? Obviously, it was supposed to be instituted among men. Yeah, and you were talking about the Constitution. Yeah. And I have a neighbor. He was pre-law in college, and he's always been a Republican, and, you know, he's he's stuck on this whole thing with the constitution is a living, breathing document. Really? And he, when he talks about the constitution, he sounds like he's a kind of a more to the left on that issue. I guess you might say. Yeah. You guys have all heard that. Let me just pull everyone who's watching right now. How many of you out there believe that the constitution's a living, breathing document? And if there's more people, meaning democracy, mob rule, that want it to wax and wane and just shift with the times and trends that it should constantly move and evolve? Or how many of you guys believe that it's basically means what it says and it's just as relevant in 2021 as it was in 1776, 1788, and 1791? Because here's the thing. I've, I've said this to you before. If the Second Amendment isn't set in stone there, the whole document's worthless. Yep. And anybody who says, well, that was for muskets and, mm -hmm. you know, that when that constitution was written, it was intended that we, the people, be armed in the same fashion and same manner or better than our government. What's yes. happened through the years is they've kind of whittled away at that and, you know, wow, gee, you can't have fully automatic weapons. You can't own this. You can't own that. According to the Constitution, we're supposed to be armed in the same way or better than, you know, according to our founding, founding fathers, than the government. I don't see anybody owning any nukes or, you know, any real significant arms anymore. No. And, you know, so if that applies to the Second Amendment, well, what about the first? There wasn't computers. There wasn't email. Back in the day, you had an inkwell. And a quill, a, quill, a, a feather, feather right? a feather to write with. Yeah. So if you want to, if you want to attack my right to bear arms, yeah. Well, hey, you better go back to um, an inkwell and and a, use a, a horse quill. to deliver the letter. Absolutely, because you you don't have the right to you know um, use your First Amendment rights to take my Second Amendment rights away as a politician. So. <laughs> Yeah, all politicians. I think you need to start. If you believe that that my rights are not set in stone for the yeah. Second Amendment, I think you need to start writing with a inkwell and a feather. I know, and I think that's a good argument. Now, I've stopped a long time ago arguing with certain types of people on the internet, but if you guys find yourself in that debate, it is a pretty good comeback, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, I, I'll tell you, my my boss, well, my boss, and a lot of other old these old timers are fed up with all this nonsense. Yeah. And I, I talk to a, a lot of uh, old timers that are like, you know, the time for talking is over is what they're saying. And I'm like, well, that's not a good thing for you to be saying. Um, But you know, like my boss, he he's talking about how, you know, these 
politicians that are supposed to be representing us yeah. don't have any backbone, you know, and the, and the Republicans that are, are supposed to be representing us, they always try to play nice and buy the rules. Well, unfortunately, the left is not playing nice nor no. by the rules. And as long as you keep playing like that, you're like the kid on the playground that they're just going to keep slamming you in the face with a, a square ball or whatever, you know, that round ball. Oh, yeah, play and, it, ball and it hurts, doesn't it? And it yeah, hurts. And they're, you know, they're playing like full contact dodgeball with you, and you're not even playing the game, you know. these. And here's kind of how I'm looking at a lot of our We're in trouble. We're in trouble. We are, and this is why I try to encourage all of you every Friday night, and I hope all of you are talking to friends in your local community, and I hope you're talking to people in this chat because I'm lucky enough to have friends like Rick that get it. And I encourage all of you guys, you need to get some people around you. You're going to need a lot of moral support. Because I look at these modern Republicans, and probably I should say modern, like as in the last 100 years modern, right? All they are is just a little speed bump. They just try to slow down gun control just enough to keep trying to earn your vote. What do you think about that? That's probably pretty accurate. And You, you know, you look at last 150 years, they've been slowly chipping away at our rights. You know, and just to give you an example, when 9-11 happened, I'll never forget it. I was at work. I'd worked the midnight shift, and I was trying to clean up my paperwork. I'd, I was a policeman, yeah. and uh, I was trying to clean up my paperwork because I was going on my days off. And my boss, the chief, used to come in every morning and kick on the TV and put on the Today Show. Huh. And he had that going, and I was trying to finish up my paperwork and stuff. And he's like, well, wait a minute something's going on at the twin towers you know and i wasn't really paying attention to what was going on and i'm like what do you mean you know and then you know we started watching i was like whoa something's going on you know and i'm like yeah. i'm thinking from my training you know i can't believe all these first responders are running in there because you gotta be thinking about secondary devices because my boss was saying it was it that Ben Laden guy, he couldn't remember yeah. you know, his name. Calling People had barely heard of ben him at Ladin. that point, had they? And, yeah, but he had already tried to blow up the Twin Towers, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'll never forget, you know, when those towers fell and everybody was just devastated. Our Republic started and, to fall that day. And I remember there was nothing flying that night, you know? And, I remember that, too. And and then they created, what was that, the Patriot Act? Then they created bill. the Patriot Act and basically did and, more to damage this Republic and that one bill and than they I was, had before that. I was young enough to say, oh, I'm willing to give up a few of my rights to keep us all safe. Sure, that's the natural tendency. Go and past the bat. Go after the bat. I was. Yeah. You know, now it ended there. I don't care whether you got cooties or whatever your yeah. disaster is. I'm done with it. Oh, I, I'm done with it, too. Because You're we, not taking any more of my rights away from me. Period. No. No, and it's just like Ben Franklin said, those who would give up an essential liberty for some perceived safety deserve neither, and will wind up with neither. I, I was a fool. I remember when I was a very young officer, and I made the dumbest comment I could have ever made to one of the old timers. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't understand what anybody needs an AK-47 for. What, what kind of a... What kind of an idiot, you know? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> needs an AK-47. He's like, he goes, you shut up right now. He goes, there's a yeah. lot, lot of people. You know, he straightened me out at a young age. I'm glad he did. And I'm he, glad you're willing. I'm glad you want to talk about this. Well, tonight, I was young and I was kind of naive, you know, because the people are just such sheep that get led down this path. And yeah. you know, he yeah. straightened me out. He said, it doesn't matter what somebody wants it the AK-47 for, he goes, do you know at one point in time we could own fully automatic weapons? I'm yeah. like, what? I had no clue. And, you know, and he was, yeah. he, he basically took the time to explain how it's a slow erosion that they're slowly taking these from us. Yeah. And he goes, if you're not careful, it's a slippery slope and they will be gone. And even virtually all Republicans right. will get up there when they're debating the Democrats and they say, hey, look, we all agree you shouldn't have machine guns, but the AR-15 is the most common rifle in America. That's a defeatist argument from the beginning when they start off saying, well, you shouldn't have machine guns, but. Well, we don't because we can't. There, there should be no. Because of the night, what, 1920s? Well, yeah, early 1930s, right? But then. 
1986, the Hughes Amendment, the poison pill that was supposed to stop Reagan from signing the Firearms Owners Protection Act, but he signed it anyways because the NRA promised they'd defeat it in court. They never took it to court. And then that prohibited any new machine guns being put on the registry after 86. And that's why it's $40,000 for oh. this little machine gun that should cost five or 600 now. Why did we even have to have reg registered machine guns back then? Shouldn't I mean, have. It was completely unconstitutional back then. I agree. You know, when they when they did their, you know, ban or outlawing of machine guns way back when. I can't believe the people didn't say been. line in the sand shall not be infringed. You know, I, I'm still awestruck that pe people. Well, where where did that come out of? Do you know where that came out of? The whole thing for the prohibition of machine guns? Do you know why that came about? Probably to give all the liquor collectors and stuff a job after prohibition was over is what I've always suspected. What it was was the gangsters in uh, one of the places that has the most, uh, can I say it, the city? Chirac or Ch Ch Chicago? Yeah. Yeah, there's Chicago. some people from Illinois that so, watch it. They know what's going on so over there. So it was there. Chicago. When all the gangsters during Prohibition times were, you know, just going in and shooting up people and that, that's what caused that. It was for everybody's safety type of thing. That's what caused enough fear amongst the public where people were willing to. Where they gave up machine guns. I know. And What's happening, answer, Sergey? The answer is no. <laughs> no. Look, it still means what it said back then. It did in 1934 and it does now. What's happening, Sergey Petrinko? He's an awesome dude, man. I was so lucky to meet him at that event in Fowlerville a couple is weeks he, ago. Is he in the States, then? That's him right there. Yeah, yeah, but is he in the States? I, I don't know where he's at. Where are you at, Sergey? Well, he says hi from Grand Rapids. I assume okay. he's oh, west side from, of the bus. Si GR. West, it, west yeah. side is the bus side. You know, look, I'm going to give you a pass because you're from Michigan, but we're on the east side, so. Uh, is he originally from Michigan, or is he like, say, he's got to be a Russian guy, I'm guessing, because of his name. Oh, yeah. So, Did you meet Sergey at that event? He was in Fowlerville just two weeks ago. Oh, man, I didn't. There were so many people. There. I know. I I was busy trying to put out fires for Rob. Well, I need to introduce you guys because thanks for another super chat, Sergey. He said, "Why should we register anything?" Well, we should not. No, the answer is no. It's not in the Second Amendment. The no. answer is no. There's no but. There's no if you pay a tax. There's no no. The answer is no. You've got people literally going nuts saying that if a state gives out a free ID so that people need an ID so you know who's voting, that that's a poll tax. While at the same time, wanting to put a $200 tax on even all the semi-auto guns. It's not in the Constitution. Sorry. No, you can't tax any right because the government did not provide such right. That's what the title of the stream's about. So, of course, they're not entitled to lay taxes on it. Well, I like how they want to do a gun buyback. Yeah, buy it back like how you bought you, it. How can you buy something from me, buy back something from me that I never bought from you? Let me buy that shirt back off you, man. I like that shirt. What's that? I want to buy that back off you. Buy it, it back? Oh, I can't. I never <laughs> owned it. I have the same I was going to say, shirt. I gave you one. What do you want to buy my shirt for? <laughs> he gave me a shirt just like Ooh, that, guys. over my head. It's been a long day. No, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> I did the double. I did the double switch on you because you're like, what the heck, dude? You, I gave you one already. Like, yeah. like are you ungrateful? <laughs> I said, I probably got a couple more if you want one. Thanks for being oh. a channel member, Dale. He says, no taxation without representation. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I don't want to tell you to quit paying your taxes, but wow. if that's the case, we got to quit paying our taxes because I know my my congresswoman's not not representing me at all her her office won't even uh, return my calls if i call there yeah i don't think the government really wants to acknowledge us anymore do they no i mean it's it's ridiculous i tried to go to secretary of state to get a license plate um um yeah i've been trying on, to on a, well i was trying to transfer my my son has uh, a trailer that um, it's coming back to me, and I was trying to transfer that, and he had an appointment. Waited like two, three months to get in there. Yeah, we go in there in January, and we stand outside, and there's this elderly couple. They they had to be at least in their 80s, standing out there freezing death. Yeah, wouldn't let them inside. All had, wouldn't let them in. We all had appointments. 
and it's cold. It was so cold out there. And I waited for over an hour to get into the secretary of state uh -huh. and with him <laughs> and they refused and he put on the thing. He had multiple transactions. They refused to transfer that into my name because I had to have my own appointment and that because he was doing, I don't know, two or three other things that they, they weren't considering that one, one of his transactions and that I had to make my own appointment. It's basically back. gone so crazy. It's like, well, maybe and we just shouldn't even have license plates anymore. So that's where I'm at with it. So I, I called my state rep and she told me to email her. So I'm trying to email her the whole story. I'd email it. It would come back. That it was undeliverable. And I, I told her, you know, that it was refusing to accept. And it was saying something like maybe I was a scam or something. Yeah. I told her it wouldn't accept my uh, my email when I, I, you know, she's like, oh, well, let me find out what's going on. You know, I haven't heard any more about it. But you know what? I don't care. I don't care. You know what's going to happen to all my trailers? Yeah. Every one of them? I'm going to get plates for them. Eventually. Yeah. No, in Maine. Oh, okay. I'm gonna get a main. I'm wow. gonna get main plates. Well, on I need main. to talk to you about that afterwards because I still can't get plates on my dump truck that I bought like 14 months ago, guys. Well, Drain the swamp. Yes, I did hear about that. Nice to see you, man. I think. See, here's the thing. Drain the swamp gave this to me when we were at this event in Howell about a month ago now, and I think this is good luck, man, because I've been keeping it right next to my computer here where I film. And I don't know. I've just been having a lot of fun filming videos ever since you gave this to me, man. So thank you. Sergey with another super chat. Thanks, dude. You're really generous, man. I appreciate it. I do need you guys' help. Like I said, this algorithm, whatever. So I really appreciate you, man. He said, 2A, anything else is unconstitutional and illegal. And that's I'm a good... to see what that... What's in his little... He has like this super, super fancy camera thing. Yeah. And I was supposed to call him back last week. We're both really busy owning small businesses. He's going to help me with a little 2A EDU website. You got to meet this guy. But I can't. He's I can't really quite see what his. He's got it. He's got like these cameras where he can be sitting in an airplane and he can take a selfie of himself like he's outside the airplane. Like okay, he does some really cool. It's 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 pretty wild looking. It's small on our. I was trying to screen right trying here. to look and see it almost like like he was surfing or something. You know, he's got his arm out. Yeah, that is actually what it looks like. It looks like yeah, a tropical. It kind of looks like he's surfing. Not a really talented guy, man. I need to. We're all so busy, man. It sucks. The Reptile Guys, thanks for the super chat and the channel member. Thanks, man. He said, I think the biggest problem we had in 34 was people couldn't communicate. There was no way for everybody to stand together. I think it it's different now. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's a good point because they were probably, at that point, they were using ball ballpoint pens yeah. and uh, paper and, you know. And they were the filling up trash service. cans at their congressman's office. Now look at this. You've got a guy that's out cutting grass all day to literally like 15 minutes before it started, a truck driver, and we're talking to like over 200 people right now. So I see where you're coming from. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, he's got a, got a good point. And that's why I'm always trying to offer this encouragement every Friday night and other times because I think that's what we're going to need. We need to do something a little bit different this time. Like there needs to be a lot of us, like a lot, lot. They're yeah. going to get involved. Yeah, and you know, and they try to create these issues so that they can lock us down yeah. and not allow us to uh, communicate because the 2A sanctuary counties yeah. was going gangbusters before the gov. I think that's part of the reason why the governor locked us down so hard was because that we we got tw like 28 counties passed in like six weeks. I think it was when we were doing this. Yeah. So and that's starting to fire up again. Yes, and here's why I, I support two-way sanctuary counties, and I encourage you all to. Look, constitutional carry, it's a complicated topic. What I don't like about constitutional carry is that's the government saying, we're passing a law to give you these rights. Two-way sanctuary counties are actually different than that. It's resolution, so be it resolved, is how they'll usually say, right? Be it resolved that we won't enforce any of these gun laws in our county. So that's actually what we should all want. The government actually saying, look. But they acknowledge the Constitution. Yes, we acknowledge the Constitution. And many have said that instead of you know passing constitutional carry law, they should just 
get rid of the prohibitions on our God-given natural rights. And that's actually what sanctuary counties are, saying we will not prohibit, we will not infringe upon these rights, and they're ordering their law enforcement and the funds that are necessary for that to not be used to infringe, right? Correct. I mean, basically, from now forward, we're not going to accept any new laws, is what they're saying. Yes. For the most part. Yes, and you they're know. saying that anything that would violate, look, you've got to start somewhere, guys. You have to start somewhere. I mean, are, the, are, are these resolutions exactly how I would write them? Of, of course not. But we can't let perfect get in the way of a good start. And if they're repealing enforcement of laws and we can keep it going and get it repealed right back down to shall not be infringed, then we'd be exactly where we need to be. Yeah, we need, we need to start somewhere. So we start by putting our foot down. Yes. And then we work on our politicians to start the repeal. Well, Agorizer, I'm sorry. I always transpose that. Agorizer with a super chat. 223, thanks, man. Says taxation with representation ain't so hot either. Well, that's an okay. Answer. That's what, a what's your definition of representation? Because I call my congresswoman. Yeah. No calls back from the staff. I think anybody. that's that's the frustration is we're not you truly know? getting represented. However, there's a fine line, and I'm not saying that you're implying this at all, agorizer. I'm seriously not. But it kind of reminds me of some people saying, well, we should just have no government at all. Not quoting you, man. It's just transition here. Well, I've read this before, and I think we should think about it. Let's look at Federalist Paper 51. And this was Hamilton or Madison. They co-wrote a lot of the Federalist Papers. And they were talking about the concept of us not having any government. I personally think we do need a government as long as it's governed by the small. law of the land. Small. The we Constitution. Small we need, yes. We need small government. And here's what it says right here. This is why they said that we need a government. You guys can believe what you want, but I'm kind of in line with this. They said the interest of the man must be connected with the constitutional rights of the place. It may be a reflection on human nature, self -devi such devices should be necessary to control the abuses of government. But what if government itself? But what is government itself? But the greatest of all reflections on human nature. If men were angels, no government would be necessary. But we're not angels, right? If nope. angels were to govern men, and this is a very important part too, but if angels were to govern men, neither external nor internal controls on government would be necessary. In framing a government, which is to be administered by men over men, the great difficulty lies in this. And this is difficult, guys, but we need to think about it. You first must enable the government to control the governed and in the next place, oblige it to control itself. A dependence on the people is no doubt the primary control on the government, but experience has taught mankind the necessity of auxiliary precautions. And it is kind of a circular thing, but does that make sense? We have to have some type of government because people yeah. just aren't going to be perfect enough just nope. to always get along, right? No, it's small. We need small government. You know, we we don't need all these uh, bureaucracy or you know bureaucratic. Yes. You know, alphabet soup as you refer to it. Yeah. But did you see the? That's um, what it is. Did you see the um, confirmation hearing for the guy for ATF? Yeah, what a joke that was. <laughs> well, they, they asked I him saw it. Yeah. His, the definition of an assault rifle or assault weapon. Yeah, whatever it my, was, he couldn't. My boss brought that up tonight, and uh, he's like, bub, 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 bub. He goes, it's really funny that he was at a total loss for words for 45 seconds, because two years ago, he goes, there's a video of him two years ago saying that you know, anything with a detachable magazine is an assault weapon. That's what he ended up saying. And then he had some obscure memo that they had written 15 years ago. Chris Plummer with the super chat and a channel member. Thanks, man. Taxation is tough. I agree. And the previous guy, Agorizer, you just made me think of something. Look, guys, I think taxation is tough, too. I'm not trying to say we should be taxed. Like, no. I'm just thinking, like, okay. Why is the government here and what's supposed to control the government? That's what I've been thinking about a lot. So income tax came about to fund World War II as a temporary tax. and uh, World War I, right? I thought it was two. I'm pretty sure it was two. But regardless. I think it was one, but anyway, it, it was to fund the war effort and it never went away. 
You know, the federal government is supposed to be funded by an excise tax. Yeah, it never goes away. It once never they... goes away. You know, our governor here, Granholm, a number of years ago, yeah. uh, probably 15 years ago or so. Yeah. There's been long. It's, yeah, it's probably been 15 years ago, maybe a little longer. But she, cre or she asked the House and the Senate to give her a temporary increase of our income tax. Mm -hmm. And it went from 3.95% to 4.35%. Yeah. Okay, that was temporary. Well, she completed her term, and it was still 4.53%. Well, we get Tricky Rick in there. And, a Republican, uh, quote, unquote. Yeah, who, who originally tried to run as a Democrat, but the Democrat Party had somebody else in mind. So then he went to the Republicans and told them, hey, I can fund my own campaign. And they're like, Come on in. Great vetting, Republican. Gateway Party. computer guy. Yeah. So anyhow, um, he rolled it back from 4.35 to 4.25%. Still more than it was. Still more than it was. Not only that, but it's our constitution has a cap of 3.95% in this state. And we're paying 4.25%. Yeah. It's unconstitutional by our state constitution. Yes, and the Michigan Constitution. And I don't think half the House and Senate even realizes it. I, I got to have that discussion with Bob Bizzat now that he's a state rep. We do, and I wonder if the representatives and senators realize that Article 1, Section 6 of the Michigan Constitution says every man has the right to keep and bear arms of himself in defense of himself and the state. I wonder if they realize that either. Bob does. Bob does, but I you know, know Bob what? does because we uh, we did the Second Amendment sanctuary with him as a county commissioner in Livingston County. And I have information so, that he's actually drafting a bill as we speak that is going to involve restoration of certain people's rights, which that's a novel concept in today's day and age, like in a good way. Yeah, well, he, he was also, I don't, I'm not sure what happened with it, but they were trying to create a, a law that would... Um, Govern and this might be part of what you're talking about, which would govern um, knives as far as that's another one too. A, a, like a universal um, uh, having a state pre having a sta state preemption law where no county could be more restrictive than state yes, law. Yes, you know, or, or city or municipality. Because you know, I, and I worked for a bunch of different municipalities as a policeman, and every one of them's got a different knife ordinance. You know, yeah. one might say you can have a three-inch blade. The next one says you can have a four-inch blade. And, yeah. you know, the next city says two and a half. And, you know, and it feels like just, a, a honey pot thing where they're just you, trying to trick you. And you just never know where you're going to get jammed up with this. Trick you into, yeah. And get charged. Fines, with crime, jail time, you know? prison. Well, yeah, probably it wouldn't be a felony. It'd be a misdemeanor. But still, you don't Who know. Who that. knows? That, that's something to follow you the rest of your life. Oh, yeah, and it's that whole slippery slope. I, I forgot to say hi to Mateo because he said hi to me in the, What's up, Mateo? In the stream on my way in. Look at these generous guys. I don't want to miss these super chats because if they're tipping me with yeah, the harder money. Yeah, you better. you better, Sergey, again, dude, yeah. look at this guy. Andy's a channel member too. Yeah. Thanks, man. He said, you guys rock. Keep it up. Thanks, man. We the people. So the guns are the teeth of the Constitution. I want to help and can add more counties to 2A Sanctuary counties. Let's chat next week. Well, let's. Um, I need to get him in touch with Rob because Rob is going gangbusters. And I'm going to be posting something on the community. Mm. Back to that again, guys. About there's a big meeting coming up in Macomb County, Michigan. Yes. That Rob's asked me to spread the word on. So, we'll yes, it's coming up. And Rob is really. Um, I, I've been kind of AWL, you know, what is it, AWL or AWL? AWOL. A I'm AWOL. Without leave. I, I've, I've been AWOL because I've been so busy truck driving and gone out of town and stuff but yeah rob and the rest of the crew have been really working hard to to do the the uh, second amendment event they did and he's been making a lot of meetings with other counties he he's got i think it's like 28 counties right now that he's dealing with that want to do you know get get a second amendment resolution going and this is where i encourage he, you guys to get involved doing it by congressional district yes you got to do it on the local local level look the, the, the federal government has become so perverted from their mandates and restrictions in the constitution and bill of <laughs> rights i get it guys there's probably not even much talking to them right now but 
the government was supposed to be set up from the ground up on the local level. And if we act like that and acknowledge it and actually go there and speak to our local people who are public servants that we elect to represent our local communities, I think that's probably the best, if not only chance that we have. And you can actually still talk to these people face to face that are in your township, your city hall, your county commissioners, even your state representative. Look, I'm, I'm a nobody, like literally, and I can get a face to face meeting with several of the state reps if I so desire. And you guys can, too. So that's where we need to be involved, don't we? You know, absolutely. I mean, my my state rep and my state senator know me. Um you know, if you mention my name, I don't know, they might cringe a little bit. <laughs> VA Wolf, thanks for the super <laughs> chat, man. Happy birthday. He says, got back from my birthday celebration to see you all. Nice. Now, if you're in Virginia, VA Wolf, huge grassroots guy. He's involved in a lot of stuff, once again, on the local level in Virginia. And that's where I'm at right now, guys. We can't just say anarchy, no government. Let's focus on our <laughs> local government, like in your literal towns. In, in cities and villages you live in because there's still a chance for some change there, in my opinion. My wife's got a cousin that was living in Virginia, and they sold their house, and they bugged out. I think they, went, they moved to South Carolina because they were fed up. I was just in South Carolina, as you guys know. I was staying in South Carolina, like 200 foot from the Georgia border, and it's different down there than it is up here in oh, Michigan. Yeah. I, I like South Carolina. I've been down there to Hilton Head a couple times. Or I don't know, I take it back one one time. I've been to Hilton Head one time. Yeah. And I, I traveled through South Carolina several times and stayed the night there and stuff. We went to uh, Palmetto State Armory nice. last last year, about this time. Well, coming back. I want to go there too. I'm going to Georgia again, guys, this there, fall. There's like and a whole bunch of stores down there in the Carolinas. I think I'm going to go like two or three them. days early. So, yeah. Depend I, yeah. It's cool down there. Depending how this summer goes for me. Because the regular event that range day is in October. I just went in May because it was mm -hmm. a reschedule because of the whatever it was, the, the China plague, right? So, when, when, when we get off, off the uh, chat tonight, I'll have to talk to you about something I'm working on. Yeah, I know, which but sucks that we're on YouTube, cool. that we have to... I don't, yeah, I don't want to discuss it, because I don't want everybody knowing Susan exactly Wiki Wiki. what I'm planning on doing, but yeah. <laughs> so I'm working on something that's going to be really cool. Sounds good. Mateo, look, guys, the moderator, look, he's like awesome. And he actually had to pay money just to remind you guys to leave me a thumbs up. So stop being stingy. Mateo just had to pay two bucks. Give me a thumbs up, guys. Even if you hate the channel, I know you guys like Rick. So I, I, sm I smashed the thumb on the way in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just do it right away and get it out of the way, right? I, I had I had the um, live stream on coming in, and I was driving about 90 down the freeway. Oh, man. <laughs> I was flying. <laughs> What's was... up, John Crump? I Someone just said, hey, John Crump live. So that must mean he's in here. What's up, dude? Investigative <laughs> journalist, and he's putting his neck out there guys i'm pretty sure the etf's not so happy with him and hope you guys are giving him all the love you can because he's always exposing a lot of stuff and i think i think i'm not going to say any more than he did in his last live stream but i think he's going to be sending me some info here pretty darn soon so just get ready he said it's going to be something pretty exciting so yeah I like that be careful guys they may be listening Thanks, Maybe Mr. Listening. C. Thanks for the super chat. I man. think they're probably watching this, and you know, oh, they they, sub knows. they subscribe to the channel regularly. All of them like the channel. Do, do you know that when <laughs> when when we were going up the Capitol last year, and like doing the two A events and open carrying? Oh yeah, we were at a bunch. Do of you know them. the FBI was running a counter surveillance on everybody up there? That must have been why my subscriber count went up by about 22 <laughs> on the way to each rally. I'm, I'm sure they, they probably put me on some kind of a watch list. It's I'm like, like, hold on a minute. I'm really? a small YouTuber. Am I a celebrity? I'm like getting escorted by like all these like blacked out limousine Dude. SUVs. I'm like, man, 280, you live in large. All these bulletproof SUVs surrounding me. I thought that's all it was about. Do you remember when BLM was up there? Yeah, I do. Street? That's, I do. That's when it was. That's what I was told. My friend Ray and I were there, and we streamed live from the Capitol that day. I'm, I'm you guys told can see a stream of that event. Somebody even said they were taking pictures of us and sending them to the FBI. I think they were. Again, I thought they were fans, and then I realized, dude, you're a nobody on YouTube. These aren't fans. These are 
<laughs> so BLM and you know, I was getting escorted by black limousines and, 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 and suburbans guys all blacked out. I didn't know why, you know, and here I am. I, I spent my whole life protecting the people in the communities that I served. And now the FBI is going to put me on some kind of a watch list or something. Probably, you know, it's like, really? Well, of course. Okay. You want to follow me around while I'm driving my truck? Come on. Whatever. Thanks for the super chat, Smash Time. Nice to see you. Great channel over there, too, by the way. This is cool. You guys can call me corny all you want, but I met him, you know, face to face, and he's a cool guy, and he gave me his business card. It's a nice card, actually. I'm going to. That's pretty thick. I need to step up to the plate, man. But there, are those, there you are go. Those like, like a plastic type? Oh, it's just a really Ooh. thick. Like three of my business cards would equal the thick thickness of the Smash Time card. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're cardboard, man. Those things, look at how thick those are. Great channel, great business card. It's from Houston, eh? Yeah, nice. My son wants to move to Texas, and that's why I want to go. To, that's why I want to go to the next event just to meet more good people and put a bunch of rounds down range so you guys can see some. I'm a shooting little, reviews. I'm a little nervous about Texas because there's just too many people from California moving there. Yeah, that makes it a little scary. But then look at our whatever. Some people call her the governor. They call her many oh, things. This, but this state, I've lived, born uh, and raised here. Born and raised here. I know. If my wife would go, I'd leave. That sucks, man. But I'm seeing some. I mean, look at Sergey's in here. I saw There's Laura a lot of good people in here, here, but our government's There's just out good. of control here. I I was talking to man. a guy yesterday down in Toledo. I I put a load on for next. Monday, I got delivered Monday. Yeah, and um, I'm talking to this guy, and he was saying that when he's voting, yeah, that if they kill babies or they um, support um, gay lifestyles, he don't vote for him. That's I'm, what he said. Oh yeah, and I'm talking to this guy, and I go, so I guess you're a Trump supporter, eh? Oh yeah, he said, you know, and he's going on and on and on, and he's talking about how bad the Democrats are and going on and on and on and he's a black guy yeah and he's just he's fed up and those he, are his personal lines in the sand me he, he goes he, he goes i can't understand why i've got family members that vote yeah. for these democrats he goes they've done nothing for the people they've kept us in, in poverty you know they've kept yeah. my people in poverty and, and he goes it's just bad and he goes they keep voting for these these people but Great guy. He's from South Carolina. Was he? Yeah, yeah. He he was headed back down there. He was trying to get uh, – he was going to be – he was going to try to make Knoxville yesterday and then be home today and unloading. So, nice guy. You could tell he was a real hardcore Christian, you know. And then those are his two lines in the sand. This guy, personally, those are the two things he votes on. What about you guys? How many of you in the chat right now – is the Second Amendment. It didn't give you your rights, but it prohibits government. And don't think for one minute when I say on here, the Second Amendment didn't give you your rights. I'm not making light of the Second Amendment. It's very important that it's there and that we keep it strong. So the Second Amendment, right, shall not be infringed. How many of you is that number one or at least number two of the reason you vote? I'm curious. Well, our founding fathers said that these were not, um, how do I put it? They, they weren't given to us by them. Yeah. They were given to us by God. They yeah. Knowledge right the, was given to us by God. They were our God-given rights. Right in the declaration, you know, these are laws of nature and nature's God. And God can mean many things. When we say God, it may be the Christian God to you. It may not be. And I'm not here to judge you on that. But it's not the government. And that's what you need to remember. And our Native American friends and supporters. Yeah. And brothers, I'll call them brothers. They believe in um, in the, the great creator and Mother Earth, and that's who endowed them with their unalienable rights. So, and even those of you that believe in no God at all, now I do believe in God. But even those of you that believe there is no God, as long as you were created, if you're a living, breathing entity, that's who gave you your rights. It, whatever it is, unless it was the former vice president that gave it to you. It was endowed to you by whatever or whoever created you. I, I worked for a tribal agency for a short, for a hot minute, let's we'll say, for a short time, like four yeah. months. I, I stayed there four months. It wasn't working out so well. I moved up north and I came back home. My, John Crump wanted me to come back. 
John Crump Live. Thanks for the super chat, man. Great channel, by the way. I think a lot of you guys are already subscribed there. If not, you should. He says they're going to be real pissed off soon. Ooh. Is it, am I going to get my channel taken down when I report on this? Or Nah, Susan likes the channel too much. Denny's plant-based journey. I like Denny. Look, we're getting all the stuff ready for the G-A-W that you'll get the link here if you're a channel member on the YouTube community page. If not, go check Patreon. But the video is going to be elsewhere. I said, dude, the Kool-Aid shirt is. I'm sorry, guys. I just like Denny more. But no, we've got, we've got piles of stuff. I'm giving everything away but one hat and one T-shirt. Not giving it away, Susan, on YouTube. So it's none of your business. Thanks for the super chat, man, and for being a channel member. He says, they have been tracking us for a while with purchases and with chats on social business. Yeah. They know mm -hmm. who we are and where we are. Still stand up. You know, they turned on my dog's Facebook. I think they wanted my dog's Facebook back up. Yeah, because your dog, I used to follow your dog's yeah, Facebook Yeah, I mean, they, they knocked poor little Franklin off because he was too conservative back in October before yeah. the election. But you know what? I can't remember Franklin's uh, password to get back on the Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and I changed it. My my son doesn't know what it is. And it's like, I don't know. It's it's there, but I don't. I can't figure that's, out. That's Franklin. That's it. Franklin Lopez. Franklin Lopez. Your he dog. Can't, I can't get him back onto his. Uh, uh, they don't even like his dog. Yeah, he's Sergey. Too conservative, and he's a Mexican. Oh. Sergey, thanks for another super chat, dude. He said, there are no atheists in foxholes, and that may very well be true. And I have my own personal convictions, and I believe who created me and who's going to take me home when my short life on Earth's over. But at the same time, I'm not here to judge anybody, and I believe we all have the same rights, no matter what we believe in or if we don't believe at all. That's, it, that's my personal. It makes me think about that movie, Full Metal Jacket. Yes. Private Joker. <laughs> he didn't believe in God. He got beat up. And I totally the love your instructor beat him for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally love your personal opinion on that, Sergey. That's awesome. I'm just not going to tell people they can't be atheists. And I'm sure you're not either. Look, these are laws of nature and of nature's God. Whatever that is for you, you know what it is. Maybe you don't know and you'll know someday. Maybe you never care to know. And that's just none of my business, guys. But I have my own personal convictions. Um, James Kawasaki is a channel member. What's happening, man? Thanks for supporting the channel, dude. I want to say hi to some of these channel members because they're helping make the channel possible too. Um, Dale Konya, what's up, man? Pro-life, pro-2A all the way. So that's two things that he's voting on. And yeah. like I said, these are personal, sincerely held beliefs, guys, and you should be sincere in what you believe in. I just don't – I just think we can all sit here no matter what and agree – that this crazy, sleepy old man didn't well, create us, right? No, he <laughs> didn't, definitely didn't create us. What kills me is, you know, these politicians. And how how does some of these people get elected? Or yeah. do they? Well, we can't say much, Susan. I, I, I guess, you know, and that that's what I think happened in my election. Elected or otherwise. I, I just ran for county commissioner last year, okay? I came, the, the the vote spread between me and the, the guy that was finished first, because there was three of us, was 150 votes. Crazy. 150 votes. Thanks, Chuck R. And I, I'm questioning whether or not there was a funny business there that was done, because it's been proven that it's able to be done remotely. Defensively, so, Susan. You know, uh, yeah. Which county, Dale's asking? Livingston County. So I was um, I was running the eighth the eighth district. It's let's see if I can get right there. It's my little campaign. Remember, it's a mirror. My, okay, but you got it. Cool, Rick yeah, Naper. Yeah, my, my signs were. Uh, <laughs> I had four by eight signs all over. They were the other candidates were peeing their pants. When I put my signs out. Oh, I know. And I've got your yellow work shirt, which I don't wear to work because I know if I wear it one day, it'll be trashed and I like it. But maybe I should wear it to work anyways. I got I more. Know. I've got some more if you want. There's I'm no sure such thing. Like, I've never worked one day, guys, where my shirts don't get all my stuff. I know. Mine get destroyed it's at work, It's impossible, man. So. Band talk. There he is. 
<laughs> and, and by the way, Livingston <coughs> County, excuse me, guys, Judicial Watch did a um, did a, some research here on our counties here, like three three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. Livingston County, okay, the last Republican controlled county in southeast Michigan. Um, supposed to be very conservative. We have, I believe it's a 109% voter registration rate. So 100% is all people. 9% more than everybody registered. Let that sink in. Washtenaw County, very liberal county to the south of us, only has 104%. So there were, okay. So if there's two, <laughs> if, okay. There's like, there's like, I want to say it's 38 counties in Michigan have voter registration issues. Well, I don't want to talk about voting too long, but let this sink in, guys. Rick and I are here. We're going to vote on something. So they tally up our vote, and the tally equals three. Think about that for a minute. Ban talk. I wanted to talk about him real quick. He, he, he used, I think he still does, but he used to go by red on here. So one time I was sitting there, and then something came up. I don't know why. I don't really have time to watch much YouTube, but I became aware that he had a channel. And he streams at night. He'll probably be on tonight, but I think it's like, 12 30 or 1 a.m. Eastern time. So if someone's he's looking for out in the East Coast, eh? I think he's out in um like Colorado or somewhere in yeah, the yeah, different time zones. So I'm watching his stream and I'm like, <laughs> let me finish, let me finish band talk before you. I'm watching it. I'm like, huh, there's only two people watching this. This must suck. But he's a channel supporter. I'm gonna have his back and just watch him. And so I go in there because I do like to watch all you guys' channels. I'm watching it for a few minutes. I call Mateo up. I'm like, hey, dude, check this guy out. And here's the reason he only had a couple people watching because he's brand new and nobody knows what he's doing. He's actually really smart and does a really good stream. So if any of you guys are on the West Coast or just like to stay up really late on a Friday night or throughout the week, I definitely recommend checking his channel out because he's really good. He's just really new at it. And yeah, good job, man. I was pleasantly surprised. So hopefully you didn't turn off the stream before you let me finish. Because you don't suck at all, and you're really smart, and I liked listening to it. I was out cutting grass till 2 in the morning one time with my big floodlights on. <laughs> it's kind of peaceful. It's cool outside. and Yeah. I'm like, let me turn this on here. There can't be nothing on, and it was on. So good job, man. Keep it up, dude. That's what we need. We need more of us just out there fighting the good fight. Yeah, it's hard for me to um... – have YouTube on in the truck because I'm kind of driving down the road usually. Yeah, and a lot of people I drive yeah. more at night because there's less traffic out there. And yeah, you know, it's just better. I like to drive at night too and work at night if I can. Danny's plant based journey with another super chat. Thanks, dude. He said Ben Shapiro just posted that a federal judge struck down California's unconstitutional ban on so called, he put quotes. Assault weapons blasted the media too. Was that while I'm on tonight? Because I've been working all day. Yeah, we might know. have breaking news going on. I don't know. I've been uh, I've been working all day too. Yeah, Joe Bob. Nothing to see here. There's two people. All of us voted, and the tally was three, or maybe it was four or five. <laughs> hey, should uh, should we talk real quick about what's going on up north? You know what's going on up north tomorrow? Frisky's Farm Market. I'm not sure about that. There's um, Antrim County Conservative Union is having a big event tomorrow um, at Frisky's Farm. Fr Frisky's Farms up there. It's a big apple orchard. So anyone in northern Michigan, Antrim County area. Yep. There um, And there's people from all over the state going up there. But they're going to have my, uh, Mike Lindell up there talking and i think pat colbeck's gonna be there there's a whole bunch of people coming to talk about but let's not talk about why they were there though talk about what happened on um they're there to talk about apple cider and <laughs> at kobo and with all the uh there were, there were coolers coming in and out of, and coolers yeah. coming in and out of kobo arena i have no doubt susan yeah. wiki wiki they were filled with apples and apple cider and so they're, they're having an event where they're gonna Show lay everything out for the people to see what happened and try to spread the word. It's gonna be a big event tomorrow. He said, "Show us your badge again." He's not a police officer, guys. Oh, I, he used to be. I'm retired. Yeah. Where's your um? Oh, is he mean that for the badge? This for the badge or this for the badge? <laughs> 
But you're not currently a, a law enforcement. No, officer. I'm retired. I'm retired. So he's not he's not one of the jack boots that's kicking your door in or anything to your dog. No, you know, I think I only kicked one door in my whole career. And it wasn't over guns, I assume. No, um, it was not. There was a gun inside though when we went in. The the owner of the house gave us because it was like her boyfriend there and I don't know it was on Thanksgiving Day I had to come in on my my holiday off. We kicked in the door, ran yeah. inside, and uh, the guy I think I think we ended up taking him to like a mental hospital or something. He was having some issues. He needed some mental health help. Yeah, but he had a gun right behind the door. He was. If we wouldn't have been fast like we were, he probably yeah. would have got that gun, and it would have been a bad situation. John Bell, thank you, says, love the show and reviews. Thank you, man. I, I do need the encouragement, guys. It's it's fun on YouTube. Anyways, what state do you feel does the best job for two heirs? Look, none of them are doing what they should be because it shall, shall not be infringed. But what's the best? It's going to be close. You know, there's quite a few. I like how... Some of the states have actually passed, I want to say they've passed legislation declaring themselves Second Amendment sanctuaries. Yeah, some are sanctuaries, not and just constitutional carry. I guess like, Vermont, is that the right answer on paper? Vermont has like no state gun control laws, or has that changed uh, lately too? I don't know. Vermont's pretty liberal. It, it is. It's weird, but for years and years, Vermont had the least amount of gun control laws in the whole country, believe it or not. My boss sold a tractor to a guy who drove up from Missouri. Yeah. And he was saying the, the gun laws are really good there. And Missouri? Missouri they're, seems they're, to be a good one. Their state was a Second Amendment sanctuary state. Well, they're not good. They're just less worse is a yeah, better way less, to word it. Less worse. Because like if there's even one, that's not good. But you guys know what we're saying, right? But I, I don't know. I don't know who the best is. Max Shot's the best, man. Thanks for being a channel member. And he's helped this channel out a lot. And he's an awesome dude. I've met him a couple times too, man. He says, Judge Benitez declared it unconstitutional. Nice. Awesome. We'll see what the panel does. Yeah. But that's that's a, that's a, that's a win. We'll take it. I mean. So Florida has been kind of a, um, I guess, kind of a spearhead leading the way for gun rights for a number of years now. Um, they're the ones that originally loosened up on the, the uh, CPLs down there. But you know what I don't like about Florida? Hmm. They still have red flag laws. Yeah, I know. Florida does have red flag laws, yeah, which is so crazy. Does, and Indiana does. And you know who signed in Indiana's? Know. You know who signed those into law? Pence, I'm sure. Yeah, it was Mike Pence. It was. You know? Drain the swamp. Thanks for the super chat, dude. I appreciate you, man. He says, does your friend. This is Rick Nieper, by the way. Anyone who's just joined him. He's been on the channel several times. He wants to know Flower Cop. Gary Mitz, the ex Flower Cop. Now drain the swamps from around our area. He's from Livingston County. And wasn't there a Mitz in like uh Fowlerville or how that might be what he's talking about is Fowlerville. I might yeah, I don't know. There was so many people. I, I haven't worked in Livingston County. Uh, since 2003, I worked down in Calhoun County for like the last 11 years of my career. Okay. And then when I was doing that, I I was in a special program where I went down to Detroit a lot and worked. So I, I got to know a lot of Detroit officers and Wayne County guys. Thanks, Right in the Swamp, man. I appreciate you, dude. Um, Chuck R., channel member in Super Chat. Thanks a lot. He said, Rick needs a PBR. A PBR. <laughs> I don't drink no more. I guess you look like the PBR kind of guy. Well, we said truck driver, farmer, right? Yeah, work work on the farm. Oh yeah, but I I don't like, man. I I hate it when he wants me to drive the tractor. I had to go drive when we were um, um, harvesting last fall. I had to go drive the tractor and run the big grain this this huge grain wagon. It's got an auger on it and stuff. Yeah, you go alongside the combine. They dump the grain in, and then you got to go over to the truck. Yeah, and you gotta load the uh, the big um, uh, trailer that it's like a dump trailer. So when you pull in, you got a um, like a hatch you open up on the bottom. Yeah, all grain pours out of the bottom. Oh yeah, I'm familiar. So, yeah, I, I and I was running the truck. So VA Wolf, he's got your back. Your friend seems like a good guy. 
I recall him on before. Oh yeah, he's yeah, been around I, once or twice. Yeah, I've been been on here a few times. Um, I've been a little nervous about coming on because I'm afraid I'll say the wrong thing and get you banned. <laughs> the rules are a little bit <laughs> arduous on here. Could you guys do me a favor? Maybe uh, maybe Linda, the prettiest girl in the stream right now, I must say, and or Mateo, could you guys put a link to Band Talk's channel in here for me, please? Band talk that's in here. If you guys have a two seconds, that'd be awesome. Um, thank you. <clears throat> Hank McCormick with a super chat and a channel member. Thanks, man. He says, Our sanctuary cities protected from feds. Dispensaries were still rated by DEA and legal states. How would two A cities differ? Uh, it's usually on the well, county. Uh, yeah, it's the, the second amendment's usually done by the county level. And I, I can tell you, like, I had a discussion with my sheriff back when I was trying to get the uh, second amendment sanctuary resolution passed yeah and he was like there's i i asked him i go what would you do if the united nations was going to come in to take our guns he told me he'd go meet him at the county line tell me they weren't welcome there and i'm like okay so you and 40 deputies <laughs> he's like it's happened well, before well that could be I, see they might not want to just mow down the 40 deputies because that could be the next I, conquer bridge well, so I there brought, is something to that. I brought up the point to him that he probably needed a few more people, you know, and where would you get those we people? The people. And, and I, I told him that I had people that were coming to me that were interested in being available to help the sheriff in the event of emergency. So, And that's where all of you should be, knowing who your elected sheriff is, holding them accountable. And look, it's it's that's what we the people means. It means like you, you can't just expect somebody with a badge to stand up for your rights because in many cases they're trying to undermine your rights. There, there are there are places where they are saying they will not allow the feds to come in and enforce, you know, I think Missouri, I think Missouri is one of them that is told the feds do not come here to enforce any uh, radical uh, gun laws. That so it's going to be pass. on a case so, by case um, basis, so, Hank. We're just a patchwork quill of different localities it's, so it's it literally could be different from one mile to the next depending what area you're it, living it in. it could be your county and your sheriff standing up for you or it could be you know your governor depending on where you live it's actually gonna stand up for you my governor she's gonna turn us all all over and try to disarm us and we're just gonna have to stand up for ourselves yeah well it depends on my not my county my county my sheriff will stand up for us when, when we were on yeah. lockdown, they weren't enforcing the lockdown. True. I know. My shop's technically here in Oakland County, and as soon as I get like four miles to the west, three miles away, whatever it is, I can breathe a sigh of relief. I didn't have to look in It's not even that far. Two miles, right? <laughs> maybe. I don't even think it's... I don't want them to pinpoint yeah. exactly where I'm at. Ten miles into Oakland County. <laughs> Ten to thirty miles away. <laughs> Randy Ben with the super sticker. Thanks a lot, man. He gave us a little shining sparkling gold coin there thanks man i appreciate it see i have to pull the super stickers up in that other chat and we've talked about this a little bit earlier the shape of how our government should look we're talking about localities right so the federal government if you imagine i think you gave me this analogy earlier of like a pyramid right yeah so the higher up it is the smaller it's actually supposed to get right there they're left up a little higher above the banner there. You see the, the pyramid? That pyramid's supposed to be your government. And the top of the pyramid is supposed to be the federal government. Okay? So as you get to the local level, the government gets larger and larger and larger right down to the local level. Well, over, That's we the people eventually at the very base. Yep. So over time, this is what you got for government. The feds are at the top. And the biggest. And we're at the bottom. That's what's happened over time. And, and that's a problem. And look, guys, it literally says it in, well, many places, but here's a real easy one for you. Literally, look, no further than the 10th Amendment. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. So that was them acknowledging it in 1791 right here. The federal government was supposed to ensure the sovereignty of the states. 
And if there was any type of dispute between one state not allowing anybody to cross into the other, there were things like that, but that's about it. Not much. There's just a very small, small portion. The Constitution's really short for a reason, right? Yeah. I mean, because we don't need a bunch of... Uh... <laughs> A bunch we don't need a bunch of laws to enforce i always like how they want to make a law for this and a law for that when i was oh. a policeman you know how many laws there are to enforce <laughs> you know there's like thirty thousand gun control laws just i'm I, saying i've been telling my wife you know i want to avoid motor carrier officers okay me too motor, motor carrier officers see trucks mm -hmm. and they see yeah ching, they, ching. they look at dollars because every ticket they write is money 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 well, she's like, if you're doing nothing wrong, you have nothing to fear. I'm like, that's what people say. What, what do you mean? I go, when I was a policeman, the motor vehicle code is so thick and so deep. I still don't know everything that's in there. And I was a policeman for 27 years. I knew guys that would go to the bathroom and sit there and read the thing in the bathroom, you know, or they'd go to, try to find something to get someone on. Yeah, or they would go in and read something new and try to enforce that. Uh, at you know, the beginning of their shift, they'd read something new in the motor vehicle code and then try to go find that violation that night. Yeah. So I don't need to find that cop when I'm driving my truck because I just want to go where I'm going, pick up the load, and go to the That's what we all want to do. Go. I just want to I want to go out and make some money. We just want to exercise you know, our I rights wanna, and be left alone. I don't want this guy stopping me just trying to write me a ticket. For I'm the same stupid. way with my truck, with, with my... Second Amendment protected rights. I just want to be left alone. Yeah, I just want to work and be left alone. Jane Locke, how you doing, Jane? You doing good? <clears throat> I've been so busy. I haven't had time to see her lately either. She's she's talking about last. She's you know, talking yeah about the big Antifa <coughs> BLM protest and how <laughs> that was so funny because yeah. Rob had like um, done like a big call to action and he had like two thousand people coming that were going to be there to make sure how was okay yeah and i was in florida and the sheriff is calling me he's like man you got to do something about this i'm like mike i'm in florida nobody's gonna listen to me i go you're gonna have to talk to these guys yourself they're not gonna listen to me and not a, yeah. he, they ended up working with mike and and it went very well and i think in i was end, around for that yeah I was he was hell. he was really happy with how it all turned out and, and it's been a good, it good was. relationship everything's been it, it, the relationship's gotten better even with mike and, and we had a good relationship to begin with so and it, i think it's even better with now. mike murphy yeah, yeah. Tang Tang good sheriff Tang Tang just gave you a compliment i think he's level-headed i wouldn't have him on here pillbox bunker what's happening man speaking of another good guy from Howell. How you doing, man? Thanks for being a channel member. He's a patron, too. Thanks, man. Nice to Good see, to see him. you. Good to see you, Pillbox. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Who else did I see? I saw another channel member, and I'm trying to find him. I know Cave Dave's in here somewhere. There he is. What's happening, Cave Dave? How you doing, man? I always like that picture. He's got that He's got that AK there on the bipod with his dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, ever, <laughs> you ever seen my... Uh... Um, oh boy. Yeah, man, I'm inhaling pollen and cottonwood like crazy out there mowing down. My wife, my wife says the YouTube channel came up on her phone. Oh, it did? Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I won't say the rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Harry Grimley. What's happening, man? <clears throat> Harry said hi to you earlier, too. I just couldn't click it fast enough. Hey, Harry. Or is he saying hi, uh, hi to Pillbox? Well, he is right now, but he was saying hi to you earlier. Okay. I just couldn't quite. Ryan D., what's happening, man? Nice to see you. Thanks for being a channel member. He says, loving this GX4, bro. Awesome, dude. Yeah, Mr. Ross says, uh-oh, Rick's in trouble. So should I show him a picture of my dog? Oh, geez. Is that is that a thing where you – oh, geez. That is, is that your dog? No. <laughs> it looks it like kind of looks like him, though. So – Here's, that does look like his dog, guys, for real. Here's <laughs> I actually thought that was his dog. It looks a lot like it. Looks like little Franklin Lopez. Oh, geez. So let, let me I'll show him a real this is the real Franklin Lopez. 
Yeah. I thought that was, they banned that dog's Facebook page just to let you guys know. Yeah. Franklin Lopez got banned on Facebook. Big time too. <laughs> I was subscribed to him or following him. And he never know. had any, he never got in trouble. That was the thing. He never got in any trouble, never got suspended or anything. And they just kicked him off Facebook. Maybe he bit someone. No, unfortunately, no. All American, would... no problem, man. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so here, here's Franklin's first ride in a semi truck. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, wow, that is pretty cool. Yeah, he was riding in the seat. He don't like all the noises in there, though. I took him with me for a couple of days. Uh, two three weeks ago. What's happening? Hey, dogs, how you doing, man? He said, "No, Franklin, no peace." Yep, Fra <laughs> Franklin. He's I don't know. He's a rescue dog. I got. <laughs> he's actually kind of a little bit of a hellion, isn't he? Oh yeah, he can be nasty. <laughs> he really can. He's bit me before. Yeah, a few times. <laughs> Phil Ellis, thanks for the super chat and for being a channel member, man. I appreciate it. Some of you guys are making me feel guilty. You're so generous. But I'm putting it all back into the channel, and hopefully you guys can see that. So thank you. The pot situation. So, you know, the whole thing with the legalization of marijuana is very scary. You know why? Because hmm. Hitler had um, uh, basically legalized drugs. Or at least they had legalized drugs in Germany. Yeah. And if you kept people under the influence of drugs, they're not so in tune and focused to what the government's doing. That's true. And someone's going to come on here, hold on, and say that you smoke some and you're completely productive. And there's going to be people like that. And a lot of you watching may be that way. But there's other people. It's it's Look, there's two ways to look at this. But, yeah, there are other people that are sitting there baked out of their mind 24-7. And just watching the bake. whole world fall apart, Wake right? And bake. You know, when I was a kid in high school, I, I, uh, I smoked my fair share. Yeah. And um, I can remember I'd come home. There was a, this neighbor kid. He always on Friday night, his parents would be up north, and he'd have a buddy over, and they'd they were always watching Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And smoking, so I'd stop by and, and uh, smoke one with them. And then when I went home, I went to bed at you know, stayed up really late. I went to bed about midnight, and the next day at like three o'clock in the morning, it was just like that commercial it used to be on TV. You know, hey Billy, are you getting up? Mm -hmm. My mom'd be like, Rick, are you getting up? I'm working on it, Ma. You know what time? It's three o'clock in the afternoon. Are you gonna get up today? Jeez, I can't. I, I can't even imagine what I'd be like if I tried that now. Because this stuff is so much more powerful. And you know, I, I've honestly, since I got out of high school, I've never touched that stuff or messed with it. Or you what know, he's bringing I, up is. I went into police work right out of high school, pretty much. Yeah. I was 19 years old when I started as a cop, and and I thought it, you know, yeah. And I've, I know that my brother actually worked with some cops years ago at first agency he worked at, and some of them guys smoke dope. And it's like, are you kidding me? How can you go out and enforce the law when you're breaking the law when you're off duty? Yeah, well, there's it's a lot a, of that's that a that goes on. I, I could and never. That's why do so that. many people so can't stand cops. I, I never too much of that. I never smoked any weed or none of that stuff, you know, as a cop. And I, I left that in high school, you know. So. But but he is right though. What he's saying here, Phil Ellis is saying that two A sanctuary laws passed by local jurisdictions actually worry the federal officials, and that is true. You're right. Here's the problem with look. I don't personally do it myself. I know some of you guys do, and you're able to keep it all together. And then you probably know some people that keep going and going with it, and they can't. Here's my big problem. With you having marijuana being a class one drug, like it's worse than cocaine on paper, the second they bust you with the marijuana, they instantly want to take your guns from you. And that's a big problem that we have right now. So there is a lot of conflict right now with state laws and federal and the supremacy clause and state preemption, it creates a big circular mess with how they're doing it. 
It's just like what my um, my state rep said. Um, there's nothing in the Second Amendment that says anything about um, like a felony conviction or anything like that. Yep, and I talk about that all the time. So it doesn't talk about that. A lot of people are like, "Well, they're a convicted felon; they can't be trusted with a gun." Because they got in trouble for something stupid like making a mistake on their taxes. Or... Yeah, they didn't put a, they didn't dot their I or cross their T in there. You know, oh, yeah. okay, they, you know, okay, they're a major criminal because whatever. Mr. Yeah. C with the super chat. Thanks, man. He said, if we get to live another day, we live another day. If it's our time to die, it's our time to die. God bless America. And there is a lot of wisdom to what he's saying. I mean... Just live each day to the fullest, and if it's your time, it's your time, right? That's right. And, and if you're so dangerous that you can't own a gun, you shouldn't be out on the street. Yeah, exactly. Why are you amongst us? If, if no matter what, if no matter yep. what, you're going to – I know. I've talked about that a ton, and I agree. And there's some people in here saying you love marijuana, some saying you don't. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I don't care. I just – I don't care if you smoke some weed. Watch what your government's doing to all of us. Yes, just don't just don't <laughs> blitz yourself to where you're just so out of it that you I think you guys know what we're talking about. Yeah, stay focused. Somebody's talking about hats. Look, I tried to get this exact hat. I'll tell you guys a quick story because I'm listening to you. This 2A Patriot hat. I like everything about it, how it looks. So I called the guy in Howell, Michigan that made these, right? For Rob. And I said, I want one just like it that says 2A EDU. Rob introduced me. We're ready to go. He quoted me. And I said, I want to order them right now. And he goes, okay, let me send you over the quote. And then I got an email that said, due to shortages from the he whatever, get the hats. I can't get them until this hat, just the just the blank hat, you know, without the embroidery. It's on back order until 9.15. So we're, look, we're talking three and a half more months. Yeah, we, we made other hats. So I'm going to look for... Another design. Let me know in the chat, first of all. And I'm not trying to sell you guys on a hat. This is something you guys have been begging me for. And I don't want you to think that I don't care because I do. And I'm honored that you would want a hat that looks like I'm totally honored, guys. Do you guys want me to wait until literally September for him to order them? And then it'll take like after that to make them? Or should I look at, do you guys just want a hat that represents the channel? Or do you want literally one that looks like this with the same pattern? Knowing it's on back order. Have you showed them, guys, our new 2A stickers? The I'm not one? sure if I have. The, the black one with the blue line through it? I think I did at one of the events. I know I have some new stickers that I'm sending off. To, yeah. um, I send these to Patreon supporters. Yeah. Channel members, I'll send you guys a sticker, too. Just hold tight because not only these, but everything with the um but you got recent range day, I'll be giving you guys a post on how to get those, too. So. I don't so, have any of the new stickers. The other ones? Let me go grab one. All right, cool. I'm going to run out for Kyle. I'll be right back. All right. I don't know, guys. You guys asked me about the hats. I'm, I'm honored that you would even want one. Like, it's totally awesome, but I'm really bummed out because I can't. And I know how this stuff goes. It's the same thing with a lot of my landscape supply stuff, guys. It's like they'll say right now that it's on back order till September, and they're not lying. But then when that day comes, Oh, now it's another month. Now it's another two months. Heck, it took me almost a year to get a new seat for my lawnmower. I mean, it's it's crazy right now, guys. I don't know. So if you guys are looking, I know you guys want some stuff, and it's awesome. I really, really like I'd love to do it. I'm not going to get rich off of hats. Look, I make my living cutting grass. But if you guys are excited about it, so am I. The question is this. Does it need to look exactly like this, but it says 2A EDU? Or should I just get something else going? Because there's one supplier who makes this exact pattern and shape of hat. Then they embroider it. Back order at least three months. But I do have some new colors and variations of my stickers that... Are pretty oh, cool. Man, you can see my shirt good. <laughs> oh yeah. So we started out originally. We had these started out as two A Livingston. Yeah. Stickers, and then we went to the two A. And they look like mine Patriot. for a reason because these are my friends, and we're trying to do a little cross, you know. Yeah. We hooked up Micah with his uh, stickers, and then we changed our logo or our design to the 
the thin blue line going through the uh, sticker from the 2A Patriots. So we went from being 2A Livingston to 2A Patriots. Yeah. So our, my guys are working in just multiple counties and like I said, they're really trying to get the 2A Sanctuary uh, stuff going again. Keep that going. And I am too. And these are my friends. These are awesome people. You probably won't see any thin blue line stuff on my stuff, just to be honest with you guys. And this is where people that agree 99% can disagree on certain things. I was at the pro um, thin blue line rally where you spoke. I was 100% pro thin blue line about a year ago. Not completely against it anymore, guys, but I'm not really 100% with it anymore. It's something I'm evolving with in my head because I've seen a lot of stuff go down in the last year that I never thought I would see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, you got some cops that support us. You got some that don't. And I'm just being honest. And if someone thinks I'm dumb because I can't, things are complicated, especially this topic. I don't know where I'm at right now with the whole police thing. You know what I'm saying? I would say the majority of cops do support our right to bear arms. You probably got maybe a third that don't. And I saw some people standing there. I thought fighting a good fight. And Antifa was there trying to kill him and maul him. And they arrested the one half and let Antifa go too. There's been some crazy stuff happen in the last year that I really wish didn't happen, but it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they're, um, yeah, some, some of the stuff that's been going on is crazy. You know, the Bible says when wrong is right and wrong, right is wrong, you know, you're living in the last days, right? Yeah. And look, I don't hate like an individual cop, guys. I'm not there either. Like Rick sitting right next to me, one of my good friends, police officer, 27 years. I know Rick. I trust Rick, but I've just seen a lot of crazy stuff happen, though, where it's like, what the heck's going on here? You know, like, like Bantock said, when the politicians come for your firearms, it's the cops who will come take them. You know, you you're know, not going to have the sleepy old former vice president. He's not going to go door to door. You know what most cops will say to that? Yeah. You want me to do what? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I had, I'll never forget this one place I worked at, and it was in Livingston County. The, the um, building and zoning guy approved permits for a motorcycle club to come in and renovate a building. Yeah. And put their club in there, their clubhouse. And they were considered to be an outlaw club. And uh, so anyhow, you got these guys riding their motorcycles with pipes on them and stuff. And the local guy that owned the hardware was having a tizzy. Well, his best friend was a township board member there. Mm -hmm. And he was dubbed the police commissioner because under the Michigan uh, Township Associations, they're supposed to have a liaison between the the township board and the police department, yeah, and the fire department, yeah. So they, you know, they they like a public safety commissioner, but they dubbed him the police commissioner. And the first thing he told my boss was, "I'll be in Monday to get my badge and my gun." <laughs> it's like, really, uh, you're not a certified officer; you can't have a badge and a gun. But he used to come in like once a week, and th this guy. Not not to put him down or anything, but he was a janitor at Ford's. Okay. And he would come in every week and he would go, Rick, Chief, I want you to run that motorcycle club out of town. He'd do that with his, his he'd go, run him right out of town. And it's like, dude, are you kidding me? Well, no, that's a good analogy. Look, Rick's a truck driver, works at a farm. It's not that a janitor is a little, you know, who cares what oh, you I, do for a living? I, I was a janitor. At U, I was a janitor at U of M for five years. It just shows like, there's tyrants to make ends meet. It just so. shows there's tyrants on all levels, like literally. But this guy wanted us to to go violate the uh, the motorcycle club's yeah civil rights, yeah. and and the thing that this idiot didn't realize their club president was a multi millionaire. He owned a big construction company. It was a multi million dollar construction company, and you want me to go violate his civil rights? Who, who's going to look out for me when I'm getting sued? Good night, Chuck. R. Nice know? to see you, man. Randy Ben, thanks for the super sticker. He gave me a thumbs up emoji. Thanks, man. I appreciate you helping out, dude. No, I know. it's 
So I, I think there's a lot of cops that will have to deal with that. You, you know? bring up the cop thing. You can see right here, there's people going back and forth on it. And Yeah, I mean, it, and it's. We've seen some crazy stuff that you probably thought you'd never see in the last year, right? Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, it's been insane. God, yeah. But, you know, most most cops are pretty reasonable. You get in, you know, like Dearborn, they were enforcing that lockdown on people and trying to write tickets. And, I know. You know, at least some of the officers were. I, I would tell them to go stuff it up their rear end because I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's unconstitutional. I'm not doing it. And that, that's the thing. When I went through um, all my police training in that, they told us, you know, if you do something that's outside the, um, uh, you know, your your policies and procedures, or you violate somebody's constitutional rights, you can be out on the hook for that whole thing. The, the municipality can feed you to the wolves. They don't have to back you, provide you any legal counsel, nothing. Yeah, and there's a law that says deprivation of rights under color of law. What is it? USC 18, <laughs> Section 242. And it gives a graduated form of punishment up to and including death. And in, in, in certain instances, if somebody under the color of law is depriving you of your rights and it causes death or irreparable harm, rape, things like that, yeah, there's I mean, a prescribed penalty for that. The, the guy up in Minneapolis, that, that's probably the feds went after him. You know, when you get hit federally, you know, you can get hit um, for civil rights violations. Yeah. And you're civilly liable for everything. Yeah. So if you own anything, you're going to lose it all. It's all goodbye. And look, guys, I'm not a cop hater either. Like I said, there's I know specific people. I'm not going to name them all right now by name that collect guns, shoot guns. They say shall not be infringed too. I've never seen them violate anyone's right to keep and bear arms. But I've also seen some crazy stuff happen. I'm just acknowledging that this is a complicated topic. And I'm not trying to bail out and play both sides of the fence. I'm really not, guys. I'm just literally saying I can't support all cops' blanket statement with what I've seen. But I'm not going to nope. condemn all police blanket statement either. I'm literally it, – it's just complicated. I hope you guys are thinking about it too, and I'm not going to give you an answer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you, you got to be careful who you trust and okay. think about this – most likely about two-thirds of the cops and two-thirds of the military will stand by the Constitution. I hope so. So, Jim but, Falcone, I know he's a – you're a sheriff's deputy, right, Jim? I know he's law enforcement in Indiana, I believe, and he says we're here to support you what, guys. What, I part, have no, what part of Indiana is he from? I don't know. Maybe he'll I, let us know here. I, I've, been driving, I've been driving into Indiana. I've been going into Butler. Wait, I think he said Wait, that he works for the DOT and he's part of the commercial safety. No, <laughs> no. no, I no, mean, I, I've been hit. There's a truck stop in, in Butler and I'll stop in there, you know, get some fuel and a sandwich or whatever. And if you're in there at night, the local cops are in there. And these young guys are pretty funny. They're pretty cool. Um, I come in there one night and I'm like, I said something. I'm like, who's been here the longest? And one guy, like, me. I go, yeah, you been a cop very long? Oh, I've been a cop a long time. I go, how long? He goes, six years. The other guy's like, yeah, I got five years on. I'm like, you guys are still babies, man. <laughs> I go, you're just learning still. What? <laughs> I, go, I was a cop for 27 years. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> Mike McLuhan with the super sticker. Thanks a lot, man. I always appreciate you. And he always does this. That's the hippo. And how did he know? Like, I'm literally sitting here right now, and it's – I guess I'm spinning my wheels, right? <laughs> That's supposed to be me in my chair here. Is that you or is that me? I don't know. Probably me. Because <laughs> here's the thing. The fact that I'm being totally honest with people, and I am, but, like, I'm thinking a lot about police right now. So all the people that are cops in here, they're like probably hating me. And all of you guys that hate the cops are probably hating me. But even if it makes it where every single person hates me, I'm just going to tell you guys the truth. I don't think it's a black and white issue right now. And I'm giving it lots of thought. You know what I mean? So I told my wife I was going to cut my hair into a mohawk. Yeah. And she had a fit. Oh, you can't do that. So 
I'm slowly kind of growing out the middle, but next time I cut it, I'm going to cut it straight back. <laughs> I'm going to leave it. I'm going to make it a, I'm going to let it grow out. You I'm, should. I'm, just like the Indians used to have. Oh, yeah. The Warriors. I'm going to have a full-blown mohawk. Did you see that guy at the uh, the 2A event? I might have. He he was, a, he was a young black guy. He had a big old, like, his girl, it was either his girlfriend or sister was like, oh, I cut that. Because I'm like, I like your mohawk, dude. Really? I know. I actually miss that. He goes, it ain't a mohawk. It's a frohawk. <laughs> I was cracking up. You got to get with the new hip lingo nowadays, yeah, right? It's a frohawk. She's like, I cut that frohawk. It was pretty cool. I mean, it was tall, too. I mean, he had it Jeez. tall and it went way back. And I mean, it went all the way back. But he was there good. supporting the 2A. So, hey, yeah, it who looked cares, good, man? Yeah, he was carrying, too. Who cares how tall is fro or hawk or whatever? I told him, I go, I like your haircut, dude. <laughs> he was a pretty young guy. He was probably in his 20s. No, I, I actually missed him. Did you? Yeah. Uh, who's there? Zephyr 322 with the super chat. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but I think that's it. Thanks for the super chat, man. He said, why are city municipalities doing whatever they want, violating rights versus counties respecting rights? And I've noticed mm. there is a big trend of that. If you look at the city yeah. police versus county sheriffs. So let's think about this, okay? Good question, man. Who runs the city? Well, it's usually going to be a mayor or a city. Um, okay. What political city manager? What political affiliation do they have in the cities? Usually the cities are where most of the people that tend to vote a little more Democrat or left. Yeah, the, the left leaning is usually mm. in the control in the cities. In your big cities for sure, and then a lot of uh, counties are usually more um, right leaning. I think you might be onto something with that. Think about it, guys. Audrey R. She comes in and leaves me comments. I've never met her in my life, but I like her. So she actually leaves me good comments once in a while that have been inspiring. She says, "I guess one third when the rubber meets the road." Hey, you know what? Even if that's what it is, and it's fine to err on the conservative side, they say 3% or even less than that were the ones that actually took up in the American Revolution. Was she talking about the one-third of the cops? I, I think that's what she means. Look, we can say it's two-thirds, okay? Even if it's only one-third, like she's saying, though, still a chance, right? You know, let's think about this. Now, if I'm a cop, my goal is to get through my shift – and try not to have anything too traumatic or terrible happen to me in my shift. I just want to go home to my wife and kids. I want to go home to, you know, my life at home. And you know, I, I, I really don't want to go out. And, you went out uh, there like, who can I deprive today of life and liberty? You know, I, yeah. I got sued for civil rights violations. You did. I did. It, it, it went on. The attorney I had said he never saw a case like this. This guy was stalking a woman through the internet, and he he had been telling her that he, if she didn't come, because she went and met him originally, uh -huh. and realized he was a kook and didn't want no part of him, and then he kept on, kept on, kept on, because he was married. And she didn't want to be involved with a married man or nothing and realized he was a little off and she wasn't interested in him. Well, he kept on and he, he was insistent that she meet him at the restaurant in town of where she lived uh -huh. and that if she didn't show up there that he was going to get inventive. So she was scared because of the messages he was leaving her. Yeah. So um, she calls the police and I'll never forget. I got got this call that he, she's being stalked through the internet. I thought, oh, this is going to be a bunch of BS. So I go there, and she plays this message. He left on a you know, recorder, old phone recorder, and tells me that, you know, she's afraid, and she had some guy friend of hers come over to stay the night because she was scared to stay alone. Now, this, this house was out in the sticks man i didn't even i had trouble finding it i didn't even know it was yeah. there and i'd probably been working there about three or probably three four years at the time and uh so i get done taking a report and i'm you know she showed me a picture of him i'm like well i'll go into town and see he's at the restaurant and i'll just tell him hey she's not interested you need to leave and don't call her no more right yeah you know be the end of it 
Well, as I'm going to leave out the door, I'm like, somebody's coming. Are you expecting company? And she's like, no. I go out there. Guess who it is? Oh, he was coming back. He showed up. <laughs> and I ended up, I was concerned with, um, you know, because the stalking laws were kind of new at the time. Yeah. And uh, I ended up calling the on-duty prosecutor and running the whole thing by him to see if he would issue a warrant. And, you know, because he couldn't tell me whether to arrest him or not. That was my decision. Yeah. But um, he said, oh, yeah, I'll authorize a warrant. I'm like, well, I think this guy needs to go to jail, you know. And, and you know, he, he gave us, you know, my my sergeant came in and we ended up, um, he gave us consent to search his place of business. And we seized his computers and stuff. And turned out he was stalking all kinds of women on the computer and stuff. It was crazy. And he didn't get he didn't get a slap on the wrist for it in the end. It was well, ridiculous. there's some creepy people and out there. He, you know, he he did like I don't know. I think they gave him like some little misdemeanor, and he served two years probation. The day he got off probation, he filed a lawsuit and sued me. And the judge down in Detroit, it was a federal case yeah. for civil rights violations. Yeah, the uh, judge had granted um god i'm trying to think of the term but basically that was the end of the case the attorney called me he goes this is this is all over it's done and i god i can't remember the legal term for that but um, it was dismissed or ba basically that it was you know it was dismissed with prejudice by the judge yeah that you know he couldn't file a lawsuit again yeah and the um it, it wasn't a week later I get a phone call from the attorney. He goes, well, he goes, I'm never going to call somebody and tell them it's over again. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? He goes, somehow they got this case reinstated. I'm like, what? See, and that's the thing. That guy doesn't have and, the right to stalk people or to sexually it, assault them. You don't have the right to infringe upon other people's right to life, liberty. I, I mean, I never, I never hit this guy. Yeah. I never did anything to him. And, you know, he ended up... Um, this lawsuit went on for over seven years Jeez. before it was finally done. And I, during that course, I went through three attorneys cause, um, Jeez. yeah. The, and two insurance carriers cause the township I worked for had changed insurance carriers. Yeah. And the one said, Oh, it's not our responsibility. It didn't happen while we had the township insured. And so therefore they backed out of it. So yeah. So it, it was the, um, it was a case that wouldn't go away. The uh, in, Finally, the, the insurance adjuster that was involved in it in the end was new. And he came in. He told that attorney, he goes, you need to make this case go away. It's gone on way too long. And they ended up making this guy sign a thing saying that, you know, I was held harmless for anything. And um, they gave the guy, I don't know, like five grand to walk away. That's pretty bizarre. And seven years. Well, here, here's the thing: his attorney missed a hearing, and between the fines and having to pay the attorneys, because he not only did he sue me, he sued my my supervisor, my chief, the township, Jeez. Livingston County, all the like the judges and the probation officers, all these people that were touched it. Yeah, got sued. And they all had judicial immunity. They eventually skated on everything at like the end of a year, but um, it went on forever. And, and um, yeah, his attorney had missed a hearing, and they had to pay all these attorneys' fees. You know, they're they're what yeah. they charge for that hearing and stuff. Yeah, and they had to pay fines. It was like fourteen thousand dollars that the attorney had to pay. The, the attorney lost money on the case. The guy never saw a dime, and he wrote a book. And name me in the book, I guess, because he was printing it in Canada. Supposedly you can get away with doing that. Well, I'll drain the swamp. I couldn't sue him. Thanks for the super chat, man. He left you. See what he said there? I can't help myself. <laughs> this are, is for the good cop going up. Huh? Are we going to Duncan? <laughs> I knew someone was going to bring up the donut joke eventually here. Yeah, fat pills. <laughs> Thanks, drain the swamp, man. As of the South with the super sticker. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Let me see what he's got here. That's a see, you showed a picture of your dog. That's a pretty cool looking dog there, ain't it? Yeah. 
I showed up to firearms training late one time. He sent me a little poopy emoji. Why is that? Oh, I think it's the smiley poopy emoji. It's a <laughs> nice, it's a nice one. So I sh I show up to uh, firearms training late, and um, the one he was the other. I was an instructor actually, and the, the other instructor, his name was Don Johnson. Yeah, no, no, no kidding. His his name is Don Johnson. So I brought these donuts. And oh my god, after um <laughs> after that, whenever we were having firearms training, Don was always like, Are you gonna bring them donuts? Because I got them from the bakery in Dexter, they got really good donuts okay. in Dexter, Michigan. And uh from then on, I always had to buy a dozen donuts to bring to training, or you know, he would be sad. I guess it's a stereotype <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> well, it's because Way way back in the like in the fifties and that forties and fifties, the only place to be open late at night to get a coffee was a donut shop. True, and a lot of cops work midnight. So, yeah, yeah, that's how that that stereotype came about. Colostomy bag. Thanks for the super chat, and I I think I get colostomy this. bag. Wow. Hey, I, I think it's a good comment though. It says we can't judge groups, only individuals. Most cops are cool, some aren't. I'm not a blue line guy, but I also feel like cops get the short end of it. And that's why I said, like, it, I'm trying to wrap my head around all this, guys. It's it, crazy. It's a tough job. I mean, it can be a great job. And I never made a lot of money as a cop. I mean, I worked in the north end of Flint, Mount yeah. Morris Township. You that's know, a tough area. It, it, it is real tough. Very tough. You know what my, my banner wage was in Mount, Mount Morris Township as a full-time police officer? One million dollars. Ten bucks an hour. Jeez, oh, Pete. Ten bucks an hour is what I worked for. That's a, a rough, rough area. Anyone from around Michigan knows. Sir. People Ooh. get shot and killed there all the time. Ooh. Paul said, Ray, this last week. She's a good one. And Rick, this week is awesome. Yeah, he said, who do you have lined up for next week? Look, I don't want to completely commit him, but I think I'm going to have Marksman TV on either next Friday or the Friday after. So, because Marksman was like, dude, I'll come on whenever you want. And I'm like, heck yeah. So, he should be coming on really soon. You guys going to do a split screen or something? Yeah, I think we'll do it. Yeah, where it's, yep, split screen from. We have to do a little dry run in between. He's super busy with his business. So am I. But I think I'd like to have Marksman TV on soon. If that's all right with you guys, which I'm sure it is. Yeah, and I am going to go back and read all this, guys, before we wrap it up here. Look. Should I just try to find a hat that's in stock or like only this one? Or I don't know. Let me know, guys. For real. I don't know. You Whatever what, you guys want. I do this channel for you. So you see what Mateo says? Hmm. Don Johnson, the cop. Yeah, his name was really Don Johnson. We used to call him Homer Vice because I worked for the Homer, Michigan Police Department. That was a good place. I loved it there. And Fort, Fort Wayne area, Jim, Jim. Fort Wayne. Hey, I was down in Bluffton uh, a couple weeks ago. I had to deliver to a factory down there. So Jack Donuts in Indiana, the best. Yeah, that's where Marksman TV is at. He's a new daddy. Yes, he is. But he wants to come on the stream. Him and I are really good friends, and we want to hang out. And I think he's a really good guy and good channel, too, for sure. James Kawasaki, average cap salary is now forty to seventy five thousand. It, it depends on where you're at. But I think the cops where I live, yeah, it, safest community in Michigan two years in a row. Yeah, this is a few years ago, and they trip over themselves there because they they really have too many now, and. Yeah. I think their starting wage is like 60, wow. 65, you know, so them guys got to be making probably 80 grand a year or better. Yeah. Good night, Randy Ben. They He's taking off. It they looks don't like do nothing. I know. It's going to be back and forth. Yeah. So get the hats with no buttons on the top. My shooting earmuffs, in some cases, they mess with me. With this pair, it actually doesn't. So I don't know. Can you get a hit without a button on the top? I don't know. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Um, yeah. I don't think I've seen one. My um earmuffs have like a cutout. I use the Peltor electronic Bluetooth, and they they have the cutout in the middle. I don't know. We've been on almost two hours already. Doesn't seem like it. It goes by so fast. 
It does. I'm just going to take one last look at the chat here, guys, before we wrap it up. Um, yeah, so some of you guys are telling me where you're buying stuff from. I'll check it out. Look, literally, I really like how this hat looks. It's on back order for months. You know what I should have done when I first came on is ask anybody if they do any work on houses. Because I'm trying to do like a major renovation yeah, drain the on swamp. my house. Drain the swamp. He's a guy, drywall, stuff like that. I already did the drywall okay. work, unfortunately. What else do you do, drain the swamp? I have, I think I have your card in my car or it's in my truck. Uh, he's he's a guy that does some, he's a contractor for a living and does some freelance work. Yeah, he does side work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I need, I need to talk to him because, man, I've had a heck of a time trying to find people. And um, I've still got work that I, I just can't get it all done. And I'm doing it, everything I can myself. I've got a couple of people helping me. but Send me an no email during the swamp just to make sure. And then we can pass your info on to Rick. You might be so busy. But, hey, if I know when got, I talked to him a month ago, he was into doing some. If he's got any time for side jobs, I'd like to talk to him. Yeah, he I'm said everything. Stuff. Send me an email during the swamp so I can hook you and Rick up because. He's just he's just a guy like me and you. He's been in the trades his whole life, type of guy. Yeah, you know, well, contract. I'm a and, guy that was a poor cop that couldn't afford to hire. So you had to learn how so to I, do it. I had to learn how to do everything myself. What's happening, Laurie? Love you, Laurie. Nice to see you in here. Laurie, she's a fighter. Is, is she from Michigan? Yeah, she's the one that's been Catherine's right hand woman with Catherine. Okay, Henry, okay, because um, there was you've met her before at some of the events. Yeah, there was a trooper, De De DeVries. Yeah. Um, I think it was Dave. Okay, from, from this area. I don't know if she's no, she's over in Catherine's yeah, side but of the state. She, but you know, they could be related. They could be. Kevin Walker became a Patreon today. Thanks, man. Look, one more time. If you guys came in late, Patreon supporters, channel members, I did mm. not forget about you. G A W apparently is a bad word on YouTube, but there's going to be a post in the community section if you're a member, in Patreon if you're on Patreon. And I'm going to have a quick video just explaining to you guys. Here it is. Here's how you get yourself in on the in on the take, on the bounty, whatever you want to call it, because I don't want anything. I want you guys to have it, because that's why I went to that event down in Georgia is for everybody, just to hang out. So, awesome. Well, did you have anything else you wanted to say? I'm getting kind of hot. No, God, I just can't believe it's all over. I feel like we just got started. We just sat down. <laughs> Of course, I was a little bit late. I know, man. Here you go. William uh, William said, shout out to my fellow hands. Truckers' lives, life struggles are real. Well, that's what he said. You're a truck driver now, right? Yeah. Farm dri hand. Driving, driving truck. I mean, I, like I said, I don't do a whole lot of farming, and I have no desire to go out and harvest or plant because I, I tell my boss, I go, that's like, Mowing the grass. I go, I really hate mowing grass. Yeah, and I mow the grass for a living. <laughs> I hate mowing grass. Lori's in central Michigan, not necessarily close to Catherine. She just drives a lot because she's yeah. committed. Okay, awesome. I don't know. I see her not all over really the place. Yeah. Huh. She was just over here in Brighton. She's in Fowlerville. She's all <laughs> over the place. Thanks, guys. Harry Grimley said, Rick, thank you for sharing this with us. Awesome. No problem. All right. I, I like coming on. It's fun. Yeah, I think so, too. Gort, thank you, man. I'm just saying bye to some people real quick here on the way out. TJ Drama's in Central Michigan. Nice. Awesome. Maybe you and Lori can hook up in some of these events. Like I said, we all need to get together, hook up, unite, because there's a lot of fighting that needs done. Yes. Hey, many hands make light work. True. Whenever you're doing anything, I don't, I don't care. You get, you get people involved and... Yep. You can get things done. Oh, yeah. What, that, I, that's what happened with the 2A Sanctuary stuff, man. Yep. Like I said, I've, I've been AWOL, and these guys are still going gangbusters trying to keep keep the momentum going. Oh, yeah. A lot of people from Michigan, a lot of people from all over the country. We need to be united. <clears throat> we can stand together and hang separately, as the saying goes. Yeah, hang hang, hang out. Uh, was it hang one by one or? Yeah, mm -hmm. hang together or hang separately, however you want to word it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Drinking Buddy says, I like hanging here on Fridays. Cool. We the People said it's a great stream. Well, I'm glad some of you like the stream because probably a lot of people are mad at me. I'm like, I don't know what to think of cops anymore, but I'm thinking about it, and I do not hate all cops no matter what. So 
No, I mean, that'll get people mad at me just for saying that. There's a lot of people that are divided right now, but that's okay. I'm just gonna be honest with yeah. you guys. Thing, things are bad, they're not getting any better. I'm frustrated with the cops, I'll leave it at this, but I don't hate this cop, a cop, you know. I think whoever said it that we need to look at individuals when, as still people. When too. I'm driving that big truck I drive, yeah, I try to stay away from the cops because I don't know, you know, if that cop wants to write me a truck ticket or whatever. Well, there you go. That pretty much says it all those, right there. Those tickets are expensive, man. Well, that says it all. Stupid yeah. stuff, you know. No, those I get it, man. carrier guys are brutal in Michigan. God I, bless you, pillbox. I, I went to the. Um, Good night, pillbox. <laughs> I guess you're, he's probably bought off. Oh, yeah. I, I went to the advanced drive school in Lansing with some motor carrier officers. Man, oh, man, you want to talk about somebody who's ruthless? Write their own mother. Man, the, I, I, I asked this guy, I'm like, if you stopped an off-duty cop who was moonlighting as a record driver for a violation, would you write him? I'd write him in a heartbeat. He knows better than the regular record driver. He's going on and on and on. I'm like, nice. I sure. definitely don't want to moonlight his record driver on you. I don't think I want to be a record driver, period. <laughs> My wife works for a telling company. That's a stressful <laughs> job. Thanks, it, Paul. I appreciate it, man. She's uh she's a uh, um dispatch manager. Oh, okay. It's stressful. Thanks, Drain the Swamp. I'm glad my channel brings your spirits up because that's why I'm on here, just to hang out. I need you guys. We all need each other. So Got to stick together, man. Heck, yeah. Gotta well, stick together. It's 100 degrees in here, so I'm out of here, guys. <laughs> all right, guys. All thanks right. for watching. Nice seeing everybody again. Oh, yeah. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. Oh, yeah. We'll have you on again soon, man.